in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I was able to go from this to this by using the clone stamp tool. The clone stamp tool can help seamlessly patch these imperfections. The key to successful retouching is patience and attention to detail, ensuring that the cloned areas match the surrounding textures and lighting. Before I get into the editing, I'm going to show you how to stack images in Photoshop. First, go down to File, then down to Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Once all of your images are selected, select Auto Align Layers to correct for any small movements or shifts between frames. Next, with your layers selected, navigate to Edit, Auto Blend Layers, and select Stack Images. Photoshop will attempt to blend the sharpest areas for each layer to create one single image with maximum detail. The photo I'm going to be working on is a 17 shot stack. And the reason it turned out like this was because the outfit was moving during the stack. Artifacts like the antennas are called ghosting, which is a common issue when stacking images of moving subjects. These ghostly outlines or duplications occur because elements of the subject have shifted between frames, resulting in overlapping or misplaced details in the final stacked image. Another very common artifact is blurry patches, which are often the result of misalignment or depth of field shifts during the stacking process. These areas can appear softer or less defined than the rest of the image, drawing unwanted attention and reducing overall sharpness. Now on to the editing. The first thing I do before I start is I will open all the images that were in the stack so they can all be available if I need to clone stamp from those images. The clone stamp tool is used to seamlessly remove any distracting artifacts or ghosting that remain after the stacking process. But before you begin clone stamping, check your settings and make sure the burst hardness is at 0%. This allows clone edges to blend with surrounding pixels, while a higher hardness, such as 100%, results in more defined edges. Using a soft brown brush helps achieve smoother blending. The size and opacity of the brush can also be modified if needed. I typically, typically set both the opacity and fill values in the mid 80% range. This provides enough coverage for sub to blending without making the corrections too obvious. Once I'm ready to start clone stamping, the first thing I do is identify all the areas that I will need to rework. And once identified, I start by working on one area at a time. And I do this because it's a lot of back and forth that I will be doing. And I usually start getting distracted and lose focus when I'm trying to work on multiple areas at the same time. For this picture, I started with the antennas first, and for images like this with lots of antenna movement, I will find the frame with the most in focus and clone stamp from the base. I start from the base because it sets a solid foundation for reconstructing the rest of the structure, ensuring any movement is progressively corrected as I work upward. You copy a clone stamp by holding the Alt key button and click on the source area. This samples the texture and color you wish to replicate. I use the zoom tool a lot when I'm doing this kind of retouching because doing so allows for much better precise control and helps you match the original textures and lighting. So for this photo, I found the image that I'm going to stamp from and I'll just zoom into the area on both the stacked image and the single image and then copy a stamp from the single then align that stamp onto the stack photo and paint the rest onto the main photo. The left antenna, I did the exact same thing. I started from the base and for this one, I was able to work my way up since it didn't move as much as the other antenna. So yeah, for images like this with lots of antenna movement, it is best to start from the base and work your way upward.
Now onto the legs. I'm going to work on the legs the exact same way I did the antennas. Start with one leg at a time and then begin clone stamping at the points where the ghosting begins and work my way up. Now that I have all the ghosting artifacts fixed, now I'm going to get into the blur patches on the body. And these are harder and more time consuming to fix because the blurred areas often lack well-defined edges or textures to clone from. In these cases, I look through the original stack for frames where that particular area is in better focus. I'll sample those clear textures and carefully clone them over the blurry patches. Sometimes the blur patch may cover a transitional zone like where a leg meets the body or along the edges of the thorax. In these situations, I alternate between sampling from multiple source images and vary my brush size and angle to recreate natural gradients and details. It's a slow process, but taking the time to match the lighting and direction of small features really help blend everything seamlessly. The edges of the subject can also be challenging to fix because they often contain both fine details and subtle transitions where the background meets the subject. If the edge is soft or particularly out of focus in some frames, I'll need to be extra meticulous. I usually zoom in very close and I use a smaller brush to sample from the clearest parts of the original stack, gradually reconstructing the textures. Sometimes I alternate between different source images to ensure the edges blend naturally with both the foreground and the background. The best way to minimize focusing stacking artifacts in the first place is to shoot with as little subject movement as possible. Use a sturdy tripod if needed and take more frames than you think you'll need to ensure every important area is in sharp focus in at least one shot. Try to use overlap focal planes and use consistent lighting to prevent shifting shadows and highlights across your images. Paying attention to your shooting technique goes a long way in reducing the amount of retouching required later, making your workflow more efficient and your results more natural looking. 
even with a good technique, some degree of artifact will often be present in your photos, especially in Photoshop. The reality is that working with live subjects means unpredictability. Tiny movements, shifting light, and naturally occurring imperfections are all part of the process. Rather than striving for unattainable perfection, embrace these small challenges as opportunities to refine your workflow and strengthen your editing skills. Over time, you will not only get faster at identifying and resolving problem areas, but you will also build an intuitive sense for how to blend clone textures so they are practically invisible in the fi finished image. Fixing artifacts is all about patience and paying close attention to details, but it can be a very tedious and time consuming task. I honestly can say that I hate doing this because it can take up so much time to completely fix an image. Let me know down in the comments if you have a different method of fixing artifacts. But I hope you all found this video to be helpful, and if it was, then consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content like this. I'll catch y'all in the next one.